When I was a student, I read a fragment of a Greek philosopher, Heraclitus. It was a long time ago, but the phrase stayed with me. Nature loves to hide, it said. Just that. Does it perhaps mean that the law which governs everything we see is invisible to our eyes? In which case, everything that is apparently there before us is hiding from us at the same time. But then, how can we know it? We may have a whole elephant here, and we just don't see it. Because we don't have the eyes or the questions to explore that particular part of nature. The universe uh, somehow has given us a shock. It's a shock therapy. It was here, in this tunnel over 100 meters below ground, that in the summer of 2012, the Higgs boson was captured, the God particle. Physicists don't approve of that term, but it does convey the idea. Thanks to this discovery, a theory has been verified which explains with remarkable precision everything we can see in the universe. The one thing in human history which I find the closest to what we do are the Gothic cathedrals. We don't really know who is the main author. We are all main authors. CERN is a community gathered around the invisible. The people who make up this community are united by a common passion for nature made not of concrete objects, but of pure energy. They deal with issues that may seem very far from everyday life. Yet here, in November 1990, in this little ground floor office, the World Wide Web was conceived. If the internet is now free and accessible to all, that is due in large part to the fact that CERN was born out of a great European ideal, whereby all knowledge must be shared and placed at the world's disposal. Today is also a special day because we hear two presentations from the two experiments, ATLAS and CMS. We should state it. We have a discovery. We have observed a new particle consistent with a Higgs boson. The LHC ring and its detectors are the largest machine ever made. But it is a machine unlike any other. It doesn't make anything. It isn't part of any production process. All it can do is look for answers. It investigates a mystery where the words and images with which we are familiar can no longer help us. Everything we see is made of invisible particles of which we possess no concrete image. Like hunters, physicists look for tracks, the prints left by energy that reveal their existence. Some of them we can discover only indirectly from the traces left by other particles. These are the paths followed by the particles in billionths of a second after a collision. They are the only pictures that the LHC can take. If we were able to see at the same time atomic phenomena and cosmological phenomena, our brain would probably explode. We only see something like an averaging of all these structures, and to be able to see this extraordinary complexity, we have to use machines. Mia madre spesso mi chiede, ma queste particelle le vedete o non le vedete? E se non le vedete, come fate a dire che esistono? It's hard to accept that nature is in its essence so undefinable and that only when we observe it does it take on a precise state. And yet from nature so indeterminate emerges the world that we know, so solid, 
reassuring. Artists and physicists find out that they can no longer describe nature directly using recognizable images. Images of something we cannot see. There are artists who are inspired by the discovery of physics to imagine the invisible. The way things look and the way things are, are very, very different. We are like a, a man standing uh, on the top of a cliff looking out uh, to a sea where he can see a horizon, uh, but only imagine what lies on the other side. Just like artists, physicists need to use their imagination to get closer to the truth. Before every experiment, there is an intuition, a question. This time, however, we are facing the mystery. It's like going into a dark room without knowing what awaits us. Our entire lives, our reality is actually embedded in this interlaced matrix of energy fields that's on a level that's invisible to our own. My human body is a fancy energy field that is made from the same building blocks as any other object in nature. And in that sense, we all come from the same material. The tests are over. It's time to attempt the great experiment. The first collisions at an unprecedented high energy. Five hundred trillion particles, compressed by the magnets into two beams each thinner than a human hair, move round the ring at the speed of light, producing a billion collisions per second. After billions of collisions, something turns up in the LHC detectors. This curve reveals the possible presence of a new mysterious particle. In less than a month, the physicists put forward 400 theories to explain it. Elementary particles have relations between one another which are more like those of a temple than those in nature that we can see with the naked eye. Ora ci siamo accorti che in ogni passo dell'universo questa simmetria ha trovato delle, delle piccole screpolature, delle rotture. I prefer truth to beauty because I think truth has less to do with taste and more to do with fact. And I think this is true in science, in, in, in the same way that science has escaped from traditional ideas of, of beauty. Humans are predisposed to see beauty, and maybe that's the most interesting thing is that we detect beauty. And the LHC is a giant detector. It's detecting something else, maybe that is what it's detecting, is, is the foundation of beauty, not just the foundation of matter. The 
heart of matter is free, unpredictable. Billions of collisions and every time the result is different from before. Here, matter shows its character of energy and dance. <laughs>